Hello everybody, are we ready for a bit of serious tomatoing? Look at it there, just peeking out in all its glory from under the cover. Got a few things to do today. Um, the fuel filler cap, it did actually come with a full flap, but it's a different color, so I've taken the mechanism out and I'll be putting the new one in. There is a coolant temperature sensor, see if that solves the idle issue. And then there are two boots for the rear cylinders. Now, only one is actually leaking, uh, but I kind of wanted to make sure that I had the other one just in case. I'm not sure if I'm going to replace it now or not. I've got to do all the spheres as well. So actually quite a bit of work left to do on the tomato. And, bless its little soul, it also has, I've just noticed that the rear silencer is hold. Um, so that is yet another job that needs to be done. Right, so first thing is I need to get the suspension up to its highest setting, but before doing that, that involves turning the car on, warming up the engine to get it to rise. So before doing that, I might as well change that coolant sensor and see if that gets sorted at the same time. So that's the first job. There it is, perfectly positioned to be a pain in the butt to take out. Well, that's a bit of good news. It turned over fine, so that is good. Now the temperature, we'll have to check um, but essentially, at the moment, it's idling about right. It's when it gets warmer that the idling goes higher, so we'll wait and see in a minute. In the meantime, we will raise the height. We're off to a great start because it is still idling too high. So it's, getting, it's going up as it gets warmer towards the 1500 mark. And not just that, but actually the the locking fuel filler cap I got doesn't work. So I said I'll show you why, but actually it does. The, the lock itself works, but it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't lock into place. So it turns out that my fuel filler actually doesn't have um, the metal ring in it that allows it to lock on. So I need to change the fuel filler neck as well, which might be a bit problematic, but I'll deal with that at some other point. The idle is still doing exactly the same as before, so it wasn't that coolant temperature sensor. Right, so I am now getting on to, I'm gonna try and change the spheres and change the leaky gator uh, on, on the rear cylinders. So car is fully sort of up to maximum height because it's stable like this and you can crack off the spheres, then I'll jack it up and put it on stands to do the rest of it. I thought, maybe naively, that you might be interested in knowing very quick takeout on how that suspension and sister and suspension works. So it's really pretty simple. This, the sphere, actually has a diaphragm sort of halfway round it and it has gas on one side of that diaphragm. And then there is the, um, the liquid on the other side. Now the gas is compressible, the liquid isn't. So the liquid goes into the sphere and it's pushed by a, a push rod. As the push rod goes in, it compresses the gas and that acts like a spring. Now, the way this differs, for example, how do they make stiffer spheres, for example, for this car as opposed to the other car? Well, this car, actually has ne less gas. It's a smaller gas chamber than the normal cars. They have a bigger gas chamber because that compresses more. On these, the sportier GTIs and so on, it compresses less, so you get a stiffer ride. <laughs> I hope that was interesting, and I hope it made some sense. Thank you. 
Right, here is the new boot. Just got to slip that on, and then hopefully this part of the job will be done. New, um, what do you call it? <laughs> I forgot what you call it. The black, the black springy thing. Uh, the gator. A new gator, and it's all in play. So I had a chat about the idle issue with Matt at Pagwanoff, and it turns out that he thought the most likely thing was the idle control valve which I have here and removed, and it does look like it's seized. So that could be some good news. He has a spare one, so um, looks like maybe Pug One Off is gonna save the day. So there it is, that's the replacement idle control valve, and we'll try and start the car up in a minute and see if it works. Yesterday I did all the suspension work, so that means that I changed the leaky gator on that side. I've changed the spheres on the whole car. So quite a bit of progress, it's taken a bit of time, but we're sort of getting there. Um, but unexpectedly, what is turning out to be an absolute nightmare is this, which is the fuel flap, which was supposed to be a really easy issue. You just get a new fuel, new fuel flap and that's it. But of course, it turned out that that little metal ring was missing. So this was just beginning to rain. This was the bit that was missing from my fuel filler, and I don't understand how, because it didn't look like anyone had actually taken it out. Um, the, you know, the screws were all pretty stiff and so on. Now, I've tried to put it back in situ with, with the pipe where it is, and it's just not going to happen because it's been pulled too much. There's not much access. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to take, there's, there's a little reserve tank under here. So it's a little secondary tank to, to expand the range because this is the biggest engine or the most thirsty engine. And basically that whole tank is going to have to come out I'm going to have to change it in situ and then hopefully push it back up. So it's just, well, it's just a pain, this job. It's a real pain and taking way longer than it should. <laughs> okay, so I've just seen that taking the that auxiliary tank out actually involves taking out the rear bumper, which is quite difficult because there's some torque screws. I don't even know how you'd get to them. So basically, I have seen, however, that having loosened it, there's loads more space to work up there, so I'm gonna have another attempt at putting it in. It's so tricky because basically you have to get this little ring on the filler neck, then you have to get this on top, then you have to get it here and line it all up. Um, so it's just, you know, bits keep moving, falling out, so it, it's just not easy really. Almost there, but just struggling to get to these tiny little nuts um, that are behind the screws and my old Tamiya wrench has come to the rescue, so <laughs> that's awesome. You just do not realise, you can't understand the satisfaction and just the pleasure that I get just from this, from this working. God, it was a massive pain in the butt to do, but it is done. Now, I've just realised that there is no exhaust under the car because I've taken it off to replace it and the new one hasn't been put on. But all the same, I think I'm going to start it up, see if it idles, see if the suspension's leaking, get some more stuff done today. So yeah, I have to wait for that exhaust as well. I've totally forgotten about that. Sounds fruity. exhaust off really all it does is give it a bit more base so well yeah no I am I'm not gonna leave it off or anything but um I could almost be tempted maybe it doesn't suit it though it sounds a bit too mean and uh, untomato like <laughs> as the tomatoes warmed up it's actually sort of the revs have gone down so I'm pretty sure that idle control valve has sorted that so that is awesome another tick so now I'm gonna put the, the suspension back on first medium normal height and then maximum height and see if I can see any leaks and fingers crossed I probably will see some but I'd rather not so that looks like a leak but actually and I was worried but actually it's just condensation from the exhaust ah uh, when will I learn I spoke too soon and the tomato has punished me we're not almost there so it looks like the windscreen wiper doesn't it moved about two inches and then stopped um, so the motors either on the way out died or hoping it's the contact so I'm gonna just try and get to that now but um, it's another problem that's come up okay well there's the wiper uh, there's the plug I've just disconnected it doesn't look 
corroded, but I'll give it a clean. Um, but I suspect that maybe that motor will need changing. I hope it's not a massive job uh, or difficult, impossible to get hold of. Got to commend the Frenchies. Taking the whole mechanism out was really pretty quick. It didn't take too long at all. Just a few bits of body trim and stuff, and then three bolts, and it was out. So what I'm doing is I want to check and see if this mechanism, sorry if I'm not showing it to you very well, the various mechanisms, if that's the problem, if these are sort of stuck or seized. So I'm going to take the motor out and see how much effort it takes to move it without the motor in place. Because with the motor in, obviously, you can't move the mechanism unless you start the motor up. Aha. Okay, so the first issue I have is... Wow. It's actually... Doing this actually takes the motor apart completely, as opposed to what I was thinking, which was that it would take the motor out. So that's an interesting assembly. Well, the great thing about this is that I can actually see the state of the motor. It's usually going to be these brushes that are the issue, or the commutator. The commutator looks all right. So I suspect it's something to do with the mechanism, that the mechanism is very stiff. So actually, I can see, simply by spinning the motor, that the mechanism is very free. It's not binding at all, so, oh, sorry, uh, the motor spins, so it's not, that's not what it is. The thing is, the commutator looks pretty good, which is normally, that's that bit there, which is normally the bit that can fail on a motor. The brushes, so these little things, they, they are quite worn, but there's enough there that it should still work okay. Um, so I'm just going to try cleaning it all up, cleaning the commutator and everything, and then seeing, seeing what it does. Okay, I, I'd say that's probably good enough really so I um, might need a little bit more work to get the jets to go where they're supposed to go but it's not bad it's good enough so I am going to book it in for the MOT. Oh hi there I'd like to book a car in for an MOT next week. Uh, yeah I was hoping to do uh, Wednesday. I've got 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. Okay let's do the 10 o'clock on Wednesday. Brilliant see you guys on Wednesday then. Yeah, Cheers fella bye. So the next, the next video is definitely the MOT and the tomato will be back on the road. <laughs> Please do subscribe if you haven't already. If you need to contact me, Instagram is the best way. Look forward to seeing you for the next video.